Okay, let's do some fun stuff. In this lecture, we're gonna quickly talk about the difference between images and containers. And then we're gonna jump right into playing around with a container. We're gonna start it, we're going to stop and remove it, and do some common administrative functions. And then we're gonna check out the container logs and the processes running in our container. So before we jump in real quick, it's good to know the difference between an image and a container. An image is the binaries and libraries and source code that all make up your application. And the container is a running instance of that image. Now, you can have many containers all based off the same image. In this lecture, we're gonna be using the open source Nginx web server. And so we'll be starting our containers based off that Nginx image. And we get all of our images from registries. Registries are kind of like what GitHub is to source code. Image registries are for container images. And the default one for Docker is Docker Hub, which you can check out at hub.docker.com. We'll play more with that later. But for now, be aware that these two things are quite different. And in the next section, we're gonna jump into images. But for now, let's focus on containers. Okay, now we're going to start a new container and use some Docker commands to manage that container. So docker container run publish 8080 nginx. Don't worry if you don't know what all that means. We'll go through it all in a minute. I'll hit enter. Switch over to my browser and type in localhost. There we go. Our Nginx server is listening. And I can hit refresh several times, and you'll see the log entry is happening in our command line here. Now, what did we just do? In the background, the Docker engine actually looked for an image called Nginx, and it pulled down the latest image for Nginx from Docker Hub. And then it started it as a new process in a new container for us to use. The publish part of the command exposes my local port 80 on my local machine and sends all traffic from it to the executable running inside that container on port 80. And since Nginx is a web server, it's gonna default to port 80. And the traffic just forwards automatically through my browser to my local host and into that container. But we don't always want this thing running in the foreground inside of our command line. So let's hit control C. And I'm gonna hit the up arrow and I'm gonna back up a little bit and type in detach. Now detach tells Docker to run it in the background and we get back the unique container ID of our container. And, and every time you run a new container, you get a new unique ID. So if we go back over to our browser and hit refresh a couple times, you can see that it's still running. So let's do a command to list our containers. Docker container ls. And you'll see the one that's still running here. It's matching the container ID of the command we just ran. And you'll see the container it's still running that we just started. So let's stop that container real quick. Docker container stop. And then the container ID and for the container ID, I only have to type the first few digits enough for it to be unique. And it stopped it. Now, if I do a Docker container LS, you'll notice nothing shows up. So the LS command only shows by default running containers. If I do an LS-A, I get back two. Now, why do I get two? So when we ran each time the Docker container run command, it started a new container from that Nginx image. And you'll notice on the right here that there's these random names. Like, we didn't use these. <laughs> How did we get these? So the container ID is always created for us, and the name is also required to be unique. And if we don't specify it, it will be created for us. So we can always name something ourselves, but if we let it pick its own, it's actually an interesting little bit of history around Docker is that they've had this for years now that that name will randomly be generated from an open source list 
of adjectives and the surnames of notable hackers or scientists. And it's pretty funny. Sometimes you'll get some really peculiar uh, names in there. So let's create a new one. Docker container run. Put in our publish and our detach. But this time, we're going to specify a name. I'm going to call it web host nginx. And now if I do my Docker container ls-a, you'll see three containers. The one we just started, and it has a name of web host, and then the two that we previously started and then stopped. Now, since we're not running this in the foreground anymore, we can't see the logs. So let's go back to our browser, and I'm going to hit refresh a couple of times to generate some logs. And then back to our terminal, and I'll do docker container logs web host. And it'll spit out the latest logs from the web host. Now, there's a couple of options you'll want to play around with on the logs command to have it follow the logs automatically, or it can just capture the last few uh, log events so that you don't end up with the entire log file being dumped to your screen. And we can also use some other Docker container commands to check on that running container. So we can try Docker container top. And you can see the help there that lets us know we need to specify a container name, web host. And you can see this is the process running inside the container. Now, for Nginx, we don't need to necessarily know all this, but it's just interesting to note that with Nginx, there's actually a master process, and then it spawns worker processes based on the configuration. And again, we can always type docker container and dash dash help to get a list of all the commands we could try on that container. Now, let's clean up what we just did. So let's do a docker container ls-a, and that's going to list all three of my containers. Now, I'm actually going to remove all three at the same time. Sometimes subcommands of Docker uh, can actually take multiple values. So in this case, I can do a Docker container rm, and then I can actually specify 63f, 690, and ode. Oops, 0de. So I got an error. What just happened here? All right, the first two were safely deleted. The third one, it's telling me I can't remove a running container because it's a safety measure. It makes sure that you don't accidentally remove the actual process that's still running. So if you do a docker container ls, you'll see we still have one running. Now, I could actually do a docker container stop to stop it first and then remove it, but I'm actually gonna do a docker container rm-f for force and 63f. And there we go. Now if I do a docker container ls-a, you'll see that nothing's there. So now we've cleaned up our mess. Okay, so in just a matter of minutes, we were able to use a single command to download and run an Nginx web server with a default configuration, listening on port 80, and then we were able to create several of those, play with the logs, and then remove the containers to clean up what we had done.